Democrats, then Republicans, smite, rail, labor. And that's the title of their release. And um, it's quite a uh, thing to see um, these workers come out and explicitly call out both parties, not saying, oh, this is one or the other. So uh, Rail Union calls out, really, it calls out the duopoly. So that's the title of the segment when we cut it. So Rail Union calls out duopoly in this press release. Uh, let's close that one instead of having multiple ones up. All right, so let's continue, or let's begin, I should say. I think that's big enough for most people to see. <clears throat> and let me make sure the sound is good. Yeah. All right. So while rail workers unions finds it despicable, but not surprising that both political parties opted to side with big business over working people yesterday and vote against the interests of ra railroad workers, not once, but twice within hours. We suffered a one-two punch at the hands of first the Democratic Party, the second served up by the Republicans. And just spot on. And this is the reason why. Now, well, not what I'm highlighting. I'm highlighting because it's important what they say. But this is the reason why those that are still voting in this duopoly, we have to we have to educate. That's it. We can we can't lead the horse to water. Give them, give give the information, but they clearly can see. This is directly from the workers. This isn't the dumb dumb online left. This isn't the uh, garage talking weed head Jimmy Dore. This is directly from the workers calling out both parties. So both of you that are playing this red blue culture war game claiming that the other party is worse than the other not for the railroad workers not for the rail were railroad workers i always have a hard time saying that word um so i'll just say rail workers so not for the rail workers so, and let's continue with their uh press release oops pop up i know you don't see it but let me close it here another one there we go all right, now I think I got them closed. All right, so first, responding to the wishes of President Biden and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the House voted to legislate a contract that the majority of U.S. freight rail workers had previously voted to reject. That is key to understand. This wasn't a, uh, hey, we added in some things that made this better. Like if they actually wanted to add in the seven day paid sick leave, they would have put it in the first bill. They put in the second one so that they couldn't include it. So that made essentially it's the deal they rejected. So that's what the Democratic Party is doing, which opens the lane for Republicans to sneak in and go, we're working class people. We're working class party now. So it's no one's fault but their own. Let's continue. The Senate would quickly follow suit. In effect, their action simply overrode our voices and desires. Let me say that again. In effect, their action simply overrode our voices and desires. I'll read it this way. Simply overrode the workers' voices and desires. Rail workers, like other, like all workers, should have the right to bargain collectively and to freely engage in strike activity if and when the members see fit and when they democratically elect to do so. That is democracy to me. Democracy in the workplace, I mean, a democracy without democracy in the workplace, is that really a democracy? And my, my answer to that question would be no. Let's continue. Within hours of the Senate uh, vote sealing our fate on Thursday afternoon, 
we would suffer a second defeat, this time at the hands of another party of big business, the Republican Party. That bill, which would have mandated that all rail workers receive seven days of paid leave. Now they're talking about the bill that everybody knew was going to be torpedoed because they didn't have 60 votes in the Senate. Now they're talking about that part. So the second bill that only talked about the amendment of uh, seven days paid leave, it passed the House, went over to the Senate. They're referring to that. That bill, which have mandated that uh, all rail workers receive seven days of paid leave, would just uh, would je would receive. Should this pop up? Oh, again. Would just uh, would receive just a. handful of uh, votes from Republicans in the House and crucially in the Senate where it went down to defeat. Quote, this one-two punch from the two party political uh, two political parties is despicable. According to RWU General Secretary Jason Dory, Doreen, sorry. Quote, Politicians are happy to voice platitudes and heap praise upon us for our heroism throughout the pandemic, the essential nature of our work, the difficult and dangerous and demanding conditions of our job. Yet when the steel hits the rail, love the analogy, they back the powerful and wealthy class one rail carriers every time, end quote. Both parties are not for the working class, but both want to, uh, both want to like uh, project working class, working class. Look, I was with the union, even the AOC be the day before, uh, and I can't bring up that tweet. It's going to lead me somewhere else. So the day before the actual vote, when nobody had no any idea she was going to vote to against the rail workers. Oh, I've been standing with the rail workers for a long time. And she posted a video of a past something she did in the past, which sick was should have signaled to all of us. She was going to vote against it or vote against the workers. Voting for it is voting against the workers. So we, we should all knew that. Bringing up old shit to cover up the new shit. Rokana is a master at this. Uh, and let's continue with the press release is off. Oh, we're almost to the end here. So yeah, let's continue. Rail workers United or rail world workers United understands that this fight for justice will continue in the coming months and years. Quote. The rail carriers are too powerful and are a scrooge to the nation's economy, end quote, according to RWU Steering Committee member Paul Lindsay, quote, they need to be taken into public ownership and run in the interests of workers, shippers, passengers, and the nation and not a handful of wealthy stockholders. That sounds like a Marxist there. Even when you're not a Marxist, you sound like a Marxist when you're analyzing the economy from the position of the worker. There's no way not to sound like a Marxist. Let me read this quote again. They need to be taken into public ownership and run in the interest of workers, shippers, passengers, and the nation not a handful of wealthy stockholders, end quote. This rail situation is so giving a glimpse to every single American, every single person who's, who's in to tune into this story, that the workers have all the power and we're simply not wielding it. We are simply not wielding the power. Congress implemented this, this law for these workers specifically because they're essential. There's no need. 
They didn't implement this for Chipotle workers. Doesn't this mean they affect, aren't, isn't this effectively mean they don't have a union? If the union is saying they're going, they're voting for strike and Congress is saying no, how, how do they have a union? How effective it can their union be with this legislation? This is this is democracy to us. Let's read some more or finish up. I think this is the yeah, this is the last paragraph here. Uh RWU believes that rail work railroad workers need to explore options other than the existing two political parties. Please, this is general strike. Hold on. I, I feel tears coming to my eyes here. Hold on. Uh oh Lord. Do you know if we can get the this 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 particular group, which is speaking in in sort of Marxist ex Marx Marxist sort of uh, essence, listen, Rome. If you're here, I'll hit you up. If you're not watching, we need to see if somebody can get in contact with them. We can have a general strike, makeshift general strike summit. Just with them, if we could get the railroad road workers, get like 10 of them and just have a general strike summit where we're talking to actual people, the rank and file that could actually stop this fucking, uh, put a halt to this fucking economy. Somebody page 911 in Rome. Tell Rome to get on this shit because he's the one that somehow he be getting in contact with these union people. So Rome, we need you to target, squarely target, listen to their press release here. And we'll talk to uh, Jimmy Dore more about this tomorrow because he may have a way. We need to get in contact with these people and get them in contact with the uh, uh, union workers from Kellogg, who also was down for a union strike during our general strike summit in the first our first annual general strike, and also um, the nurse union who was striking in was it Massachusetts? Yeah, they were striking in Massachusetts, and they also we mentioned general strike, and they said he almost had an orgasm when we mentioned that. He was like, "Yes, I'm down for that shit." So we need to broker a discussion. We need to really attempt to broker a discussion. If it's not already happening, they probably already thought of this themselves. But if it's not happening, that's something I'll talk to Rome about. Let's finish this, and then we can move on to the uh, other stories here. Uh, where am I? It doesn't matter where I start. Or I can start over, I guess. I reread a part. So, because <laughs> I started... Getting the chills when I begin to read this. So let's let me read it again. Railroad Workers United believes that railroad workers need to explore options other than the existing two political parties, since neither appears to have our backs. RWU also believes that railroad workers need to consider doing away with the archaic and divided craft union system that hampers our unity and solidarity and initiate the process of building a single and powerful railroad worker union that can win in future rounds of contract bargaining. According to RWU organizer R, uh, Ryan Kaminsko, Kaminsko uh, quote, we have been played for well over a century by politicians and union officials alike. The fiasco of recent months will show that perhaps the time has come for railroad workers to push for a unified and powerful labor organization of all crafts together with a political party 
oh my God, this sounds like a workers workers party that will better serve the interests of not just railroad workers, but all working class people. <sighs> this is sounding so beautiful here. So let's, I, I know maybe I'm overdoing it. Maybe, I don't know if you are feeling it. The reason I'm feeling like this shit is amazing because this is this is one of the you this is the union they had to write legislation for saying this the unions they had to cover legislation to stop them from striking they're saying fuck these two parties meanwhile the humanist report TYT Sam Cedar is saying vote some Democrats in. Who's for the worker? The worker is saying both parties. Isn't that what the workers are saying here? If this is not a call to action, I hope this is being, I mean, I, if I'm a union member in any other union, when I'm hearing this, I'm like, Somebody need to get on the motherfucking phone and call these people right now. Do, I mean, because I'm here in general strike. Is anybody else not hearing this? I mean, am I tripping here? I'm going to go hear comments in a second. Because what I'm reading, the Marxist analysis that was in, in, earlier in this, in this, in this, uh, uh, a release and then this last quote here where they're saying fuck these two parties both of them are fucking us over it's time for us to break the chains the barriers of these smaller party a uh, smaller uh, uh unions make one unified union this is exactly marxism this is exactly it is it not trade unions coming together forming their own is that not the process This is amazing to me. So let me go to your comments. Y'all going y'all going to check the temperature in the room cuz maybe I'm off cuz I'm reading this as 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 an aspiring Marxist. I'm going to call myself that cuz I feel like I want to do more reading on it just so I can feel more secure with my own understanding. So I'm an aspiring Marxist. This sounds like a this sounds like it, this could be Marx, somebody writing about Marx's theory. And this is coming directly from, this is why this is important. This is coming directly from the union partners, and I'm calling them that because it's all it's, a, it's, it's a several unions. The union partners that form the Rail Workers United, they're saying, fuck both of these motherfuckers and form one union. And did you hear that second part? and also a political party that not only represent rail workers, but all workers. Couple that with them saying, we need to take the ownership. How is, isn't this what we're talking about? So let me go to the comments. And I'll start newest and go to older. Marxism is nothing but the theatrical expression of working class movements to the resistance of a, a bad abolition of capitalism. Thank you, Zayden. In the military, I was trained to simply sledgehammer a rail line a night. Civil disobedience on a mass scale. That's huge. I'm thinking the same. This is this statement and the way the wording of the statement to me is huge. And if I was a capitalist reading this, I'll be like, what the fuck is this? What kind of shit is going on here? We need to pass some more military funding. We need to pass some more police funding. It looks like the Marxists have finally reached the people. 
it's time to mobilize. That's what they're saying. Cause it, let me let me continue. Let me continue. This uh RWU Ron K, because I'm I don't want to keep pronouncing his name wrong. Get him on the phone. Like I said, I want to if Rome is not hearing this and somebody haven't gotten word to him already. We need to get in touch with uh, somebody over here in the, with this with the rail workers, railroad workers united. We need to reach out to Kellogg. We need to reach out to all the union people. Liz Medina, I think is her last I'm saying her name, last name. She's a AFL CIO was on also on the summit. Let's continue. General strike. What's up, Curtis? Um, else capitalism no longer is working for them and they want out. Yep, general strike is coming. I'm reading general strike in this in this here without saying the words, but it barely comes very close to starting to spell out the words general strike. That's what is very, very close. The next, the next line is general strike, bitch. <laughs> you got to include the bitch. Uh, watch the fraud squad take credit. Won't they? Won't they come in here with their capes saying, pat me on the back? Watch everybody fall in line now. Watch the boutique. The boutique... I'm sorry, the petty bourgeoisie, watch they fall in line like this was their idea. Like they wasn't fucking calling our general strike summit out a year ago. Watch they pretend like that is the deal. Uh, right on, CJ, you not tripping. I, I, it reads like it's called to general strike to me. And if I was another rail union member, I would be like, we need to be calling all unions. And I hope, I hope that I, we, I can't be the only one that's thinking this. I cannot be. And I think I'm not, be, and I know I'm not because in the way that they're wording it, because I'm going to read that last part again, with sub Dana, general strike, absolutely uh Need more strikes in our lives. Yes, we do. Uh, I'm on strike against my mortgage. Uh, I've been on a strike against my student loan payment. Oh, I've been doing that. <laughs> we calling that a strike? Okay, then I've been on strike. I've been on that strike too. General strike right now. And you notice he said we will be, the, not he, uh, the, the uh, release was saying, we will be addressing this in other ways in the next coming months and years. That's the planning of a general strike. Because even you can say it now, but it takes planning. You have to build an infrastructure that you can withstand going on strike against capitalists. Because you think they're just going to lie down? They're marching us to nuclear war. They're killing the planet. Do you think they're just going to get mad at that some Marxists and Marxist-expired people have decided to say, fuck this shit? No. So let me read uh, this part again because it's so inspiring. Hope, I'm sorry that I'm staying on this long, but this is very inspiring to me. Gives me more energy to fight and, 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 and uh, push for general strike striking terms not the terms of the general strike what the demands are but like let's keep let's move this general strike people think we just talk about general strike and then it's the next day general strike talking will take years as we're implementing it it's an ongoing talk that's going to be continually happening as they're doing as our adversary the ruling class the capitalist is doing their uh, counter counter sort of uh, attacks. We're gonna have to make different maneuvers here, different maneuvers there. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me read this again. This is just incredible to me. And again, and and you, for those who are just joining, 
Why is it so incredible? They're just making a release. The reason it's incredible is because this is the union that they had to make legislation for. They're that important. They're saying this. That's huge. And I'll point out some other things. I mean, essentially, uh, this entire last part, rail unions, or I'm sorry, railroad workers unions united uh, railroad workers united believes that railroad workers need to explore options other than the existing two political party since neither appears to have our backs. RWU also believes that the railroad workers need to consider doing away with the archaic and divided craft union system that hampers our unity and solidarity, broken up maybe intentionally to hamper the unity. Doing away with that and initiating the process of building a single and powerful railroad union that can win in future rounds of contract bargaining. According to the RWU organizer, Ron K., quote, we have been played for well over a century this is not just this you you hear this is what i'm saying they're not saying like nigga this we're just mad for 20 years they're saying we're tired of this shit a, a century of this shit we're all this we're done we've been played for well over a century by politicians and union officials they're saying our leaders in our unions alike the same. This is the rank and file saying the workers saying fuck these lead union leaders, these co-op the union leaders. The fiasco of recent, the fiasco of recent uh, months will show that perhaps the time has come for railroad workers to push for a unified and powerful labor organizations of all crafts together with a political party. Once you bring the workers together in order to apply the dictatorship of the proletariat, you have to form a political party. Is this not what this is? Together with a political party that will better serve the interest, and this is the part that is, is not saying, we just want a contract dispute. They're saying this whole shit needs to be flipped. Not just railroad worker, workers, but all working class people. This is the working class party that we've all been dreaming about. It's, to, it's time to apply the dictatorship of the proletariat. To me, this is this is just great, just great. Anyway, um, I'll put up a couple of your comments, and then <laughs> the thing is, I haven't even gotten to the story yet. This is just this was just supposed to be, but it sets a beautiful foundation for the rest of the story because I wanted to read this to set the story for for everything else. <clears throat> and think about who, what in history, if this actually moves down the road, where I hope. And all Marxists hope this will lead down to the squad will be able to say we voted against the rail workers that precipitated this. <laughs>